Hello everyone, in this tutorial we are going to be talking about two-handed weapons or objects that you may want to do to create something like this, a character actually wielding uh, one weapon with both hands and commanding both hands of the IK, the inverse kinematic, with the weapon itself, that's option one, or doing it the opposite and commanding the weapon with one hand and then the other hand will follow. So how did we do this? Let's go ahead and dive into it. I am going to, as usual, delete everything and do everything from scratch. So I'll be deleting the body animation, I'll be deleting everything that I've done. So as of right now, the only thing I have is an idle animation for a character, and then I also have this Wukong stuff. Now, this is a very cool asset, and I'll make a very, very quick stop here. Any character or any asset that you get from Paragon are very, 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 very cool. So you may want to actually go through them and take a look at them and maybe you want to find a very cool looking stuff but there's nothing for free in fab and then you find that Wukong for example this one has a very cool looking stuff and you can follow the steps I explained on this previous video on how to extract the stuff from this character you gotta go and make a static mesh and then through the modeling tools you'll be able to extract it and get something like this so let's go ahead and do this with step one. So what we'll do right now is very, very simple. We are going to step one, add a layered control rig to my MetaHuman. So the first thing I'll do is add this layered control rig, press G so we can see the shapes. And then in the global control, we need to make the first detail and the first change. We need to switch both from forwards to inverse kinematics. That's gonna make it so when the elbow bends, everything looks correct. So what we need to do is figure out a position in which we want our starting hand to be. So very quickly, this is going to be a very dirty uh, animation set. So don't worry too much about it or about the quality or I'm not going to worry about it in a tutorial. So what we'll do is something, let's say something like this. Hand is in front, hand is up. And what we'll do next is we are going to have a to do a double step because constraints in Unreal Engine don't really work that well. So we're going to have to do a double step. So first we're going to add a constraint, powering constraint. We're going to actually the opposite. We're going to, yes, it's fine. Powering constraint to the hand. And what we'll do is once we have it, we are going to disable maintain offset. That'll make it so the staff actually lines up perfectly with our hand. But the only thing we're doing that for is to now have, I am going to delete that constraint because I want to have the staff in that position so it makes my life easier to rotate it. So what I'll do now is position the staff in the correct pose where I want it. So let's say something like this. Again, we're not gonna be super perfect here. And that's great. So what I'll do is I'll switch to the local space of the staff so I can slide it downwards easier. And now comes in with the actual steps of this. So by selecting the right hand, I'll do plus constraints here and I'll do a parent constraint to the staff. Remember that constraints are always in the animation mode down here. So now that I have that, the staff will be controlling the hand, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna leave it there, but we need to do the next step. We may want to have the hand also parented to the staff. So what I'll do is I won't do that from the get-go. I wanna do the animation that we did at the beginning. So I'll have the staff be in the center of my character something around here and then as the animation goes we see that the hand is now perfectly stuck because it's IK so let's say that in the middle here we're gonna put another protection keyframe so he holds that position up until 56 and then we'll lift the staff or we'll move it over here so it's gonna look something like this and then at this point in a couple of seconds later is where I want the other hand to come in. So I'll switch again to global space. I'm going to move this hand in. I'm going to rotate it in a way that it fits a bit better. Again, this is going to be rough and quick. But let's say something along these lines is perfect. So again, this hand is going to be moving from the beginning. So we don't want that. What we want is to protect that keyframe. So again, we're going to hold again. This is an additive layer. So we need to hold that position, the original position, and then the hand is going to move. And obviously we don't want to go through the staff. We want to make it a little faster too. So we're going to move it closer. 
And then what we need is the hand to go high and above and then down. There we go, something like that. And then from this point is where we are going to be doing the same thing that we did with the other hand. We are going to parent constraint to the staff. And that means that now both hands are stuck to the staff. And that means that the staff is free to do whatever it wants. So I can now move the staff. Both hands are moving, move the staff. Both hands are moving. Obviously, keep in mind that if we go over the limit, it's going to start breaking. You see that this happens. So we got to be mindful that we don't see the control of the IK drifting away. So we're going to go up to here. And then let's say we go up to here or something like that. Obviously, again, we want to keep in mind that the constraints, that the controls for the IK shouldn't break. And again, this, this is where the creativity comes in. I am doing just a very quick and dirty movement here. So you can see that it works. And let's say that up to this point, the character actually is going to drop the staff back to original position. So I'm going to move it somewhere along these lines. Let's say there is perfect, right? That's good enough. And the problem is obviously that if we continue on with the constraint, you can see that the left arm is going just wild. So what we'll do is, as we did in previous work, we are going to go in and up to this point say, all right, from here onwards, the constraint, and if we take a look at the bar in the constraint here in the transform of the hand IK, the left one in the additive, we are going to simply click on this, keyframe the constraint, which switches it off that means that now I am free to, again, control the hand myself. I am simply going to pull it back into a resting position. 